system? You're so, so this is a system that's going to pass us? Oh, well, I didn't hear that. But um, I'm uh, going to re research that as well. So guys, while I am uh, eating my sandwich, I am just going to to play a little selection of what I am I am listening to. Not for the first time today, for the second time today, on uh, Monday, August twenty first, twenty seventeen, to celebrate the uh, eclipse, I guess. Uh, so I'm not going to embarrass this non-commercial radio station uh, somewhere outside of Seattle, Washington. They're, they're a pretty good station. And apparently, the, the, for, for the second time today, they are airing this program between these absolutely bonker, mentally ill, fucking whack jobs talking about planet Nibiru the uh, or Nibiru or whatever the fuck you call this so the the dingling woman is the hostess I don't know if she works for this radio station or not if she does she needs to be fired and I don't I, all I know about this clueless fucking moron is his name is Richard, and he is explaining to this clueless, dingling, flibberty gibbet about his research on the planet Nibiru. This goes on, this nonsense, unadulterated horseshit goes on for one solid hour. Uh, I cannot believe th th these... <coughs> This otherwise pretty good NPR station uh, are, 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 are giving these clowns one minute of airtime, much less doing this twice in one day. So uh, I've already heard this bullshit. So this will be my wacky conspiracy uh, roundup. Uh, why... The, why the planet's collective IQ is heading directly, directly into the toilet. And we can thank the NPR, non-commercial radio stations, for this. Anyway, when I go make my sandwich, I'll turn it over uh, to the dingling and the whack job. I'm sure that he was heavily convinced to sign that gag order because, um, let's see, we, we started finding out about Planet X um, back in the 40s through an Argentinian astronomer. Right, well, it was brought to Ronald Reagan's attention in 1970, um, 19. Okay, so there's been a gag order, Ronald Reagan put a gag order, which basically means that nobody's supposed to be uh, talking about it, the American people aren't supposed to be... Right, if you get caught talking about it, life in prison, that's what he said, and uh, so nobody talked about it. Okay, then how did it get found out? Yeah. Um, just recently, it was brought to uh, Trump's attention, and you know, <laughs> last thing you want is something like this to come up in in the middle of your administration, and you say, "Oh, I didn't know anything about it." No, of course. Now he's got to he's got to say something about it because. It's coming up during his administration, right? So, he's going to try and help everybody, you know, as much as he can. So, when, where did you get this bit of news about uh, Trump telling uh, the country that he was going to be assisting it after Nibiru and uh, the star system passes by? Well, actually, that's... Uh, isn't something that uh, he's he's gonna do I'm just saying that uh, 
It's a possibility he could. So you're saying that the president, uh, President Trump, is aware that this giant star system is passing by us on probably many levels and going to make this big magnetic pull. So what else have you found out about Nadu? So you're saying he knows about it already, the president knows about it. Is he informing the people? Uh, no, he's uh, he, he he's pretty much uh, just staying on. You know, we got enough problems without the guru coming, right? <laughs> All right, so he's he's trying to stay stay busy with his own stuff. Okay. You know. Where did you find this out? Uh, doing uh, research. Uh, I just uh, saw that. Uh, um, NASA admits that Nibiru is coming, you know, and uh, so if if they're saying that it's coming. What is NASA telling us about Nibiru? And what's been the devastation? He said, he said uh, okay, Nibiru has several names and one of them is called... Destroyer. Another is Dragon. So it's got a whole bunch of names. So it's got uh, Wormwood, you know. Um, and where does Wormwood come from? Uh, wormwood comes from like biblical times. I imagine it's in the Bible. So. <laughs> uh, okay, so that would be biblical. First of uh, translated in, through um, Zachariah's fiction and uh, the Sumerian texts that were uncovered in Sumeria, in ancient Sumeria, and of a large, I guess, earthquake that knocked uh, these down, uh, down, and all these tablets were preserved. And now they've been translated, and so. One of the things is is a large heavenly body in the sky right. that passes over and causes what's known as a pole shift. Right. Changes it um, makes the you know, Earth rotate uh, a little bit to one direction, the pole shift, and um, also makes the um, motions go eight to four miles. Yeah, from what I understand, from my uh, research is that the, it's a natural thing that the Earth, the pla our planet Earth does every 3,600 years. So uh, as, as recorded, though there may be other events of as astronomical events. Right. Right. And it's usually, um, this is going to be accompanied by strange things in the sky. Things that we don't normally see in the sky, which are already show, showing up. What are we seeing? What are pictures that people all over the globe are seeing? Have you been watching some of them? Um, they, they actually, Argentina is showing uh, um, Nibiru um, right next to the sun. Either sunrise or sunset. What does it look like? It's just uh, like a little orb to the right, you know, or you know, to the left or like whatever. Like a planet, maybe a plain looking planet. Yeah, yeah, like a planet looking thing to the side of the ego. You, know, you gotta hide the sun, but you can see it to the side. in the sky, strange uh, things, phenomenon in the sky. Yeah, they, you know, once this thing gets close, we're going to start seeing a lot of things. We're going to start seeing, um, because of the pole shift, we're going to start seeing northern aurora borealis right here in uh, Washington, because we are going to be in the Arctic Circle. You know, and, um... Are you sure about that? Yeah. Actually, we're going to be in the, um... The... The... the, the on the I Earth. understand 
cathartic circle. So is this what NASA is saying? Yeah. Yeah, when, if you look at the way that the thing's going to turn, it's going to put us right where the, um, right where the cathartic circle is. That could be true. Because it's a shift and not a full reversal of the right. poles. So I believe it's a, like 20, 22 degree shift. Right, right. So we're right. going to be, um, but then, you know, so many things could be shifting too. This doesn't mean it's going to be cold. Yeah, you know, I uh, also, I just looked at uh, um, um, a uh, report with um, the airports. You know, they had, they all had to shut, they all had to shut down and recalibrate their um, GPSs because uh, um, Magnetic North moved 20 miles. You know, if, if you got your aircraft going in one direction, you know, and uh, you want it to land somewhere, and <laughs> you want it to land where it's supposed to, not 20 miles away, right? Yeah, I think that would be a big shocker for, uh, yeah, a large aircraft to be uh, lost in the air. Yeah, this is uh, getting a... Uh, There's a pig being Sorry. slaughtered in the background? So, what other uh, little tidbits are you finding out? Uh, when is this going to pass by? Um, and, and what are we going to be seeing as uh, this passes? Or comes to us? Well, we, we, what we're going to be seeing is um, meteors. That uh, oh, so sure they'll go by like like usual, you know. But there's going to be a hell of a lot of them that don't, and they're the ones that are going to be hitting the ground. The tail of the dragon. No, this is precursor. Oh, this is before. Yeah. So we're going to be seeing meteors before it comes, and then afterwards we'll probably be seeing the tail and the debris. It has a, de a debris tail. We're going to be falling back into the tail and it's supposed to slow our rotation. So, <laughs> if we, uh, let's hope it doesn't stop the earth because if it does, we're just going to float off. All right. Well, we might lighten up a little bit. <laughs> If they pull up a little bit on that gravitational uh, downbeat. Well, um, yeah, I've been, you know, studying Nibiru on the uh, web uh, for about three years now. There's several people up front that are telling us about it. Uh, most of them are strong astronomers and, and uh, masters at this. But there was a cover-up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that uh, that started with uh, um, Ronald Reagan covering that stuff up. That that's when he put. Okay, guys. If there, I can't imagine that there's that there's a single human being still listening to this rant. Um, <clears throat> you know, and, and you wonder why we're fucked. This is what the non-commercial NPR stations are offering their listeners in uh, Seattle, Washington. With, with all of the subjects on the planet they could be talking about today, uh, this is the subject that they chose. As they say, not once. They, they played this between 8 and 9 in the morning, and now they're replaying it from noon to 1. And I don't know if it's going to be replayed a third time in one day. But uh, this station should be absolutely embarrassed. That Fliberty Gibbet, if she works for the station, needs to be fired. But... You know, I, I try to appreciate 
the sick humor in all this, and I do appreciate it, but you do need to keep in mind that there are more people on this planet right now, today, um, who believe that planet Nibiru is on its way or is already here or whatever, and who have never considered the notion you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet. It has never entered their minds. Um, they're and the people who understand that you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet are more despised than Nibiru wackos. When most people, if they were to stop by Humpty Dumpty Tribe and listen to me doing one of my rants, uh, they would they would toss me off as as someone more insane than a Nibiru whack job. I firmly believe this and understand this. So, with that, uh, my little weekly... Uh, roundup of fucking wackos who will believe any unadulterated horseshit you tell them. I will once again get out of my gas sucking truck and finally, finally blaze the trail to where I will be spending 30 days looking for Bigfoot. So this is your old uh, pro-science, anti-whack job, Bigfoot hunter who understands you cannot have an infinite growth on a finite planet heading off to find Bigfoot so I can find some intelligent life on our own planet. Because I'm sure as shit not finding it on this radio station. Bye, guys.